I guess you could say it's starting to feel like deja vu all over again with these cyber attacks. BF Corp's the most recent victim, and its stock plunged nearly 8% today in response. It was making a comeback. Wow. Today's hack comes right as the new SEC rules go into effect. Rules that say companies need to disclose within four days of finding out that they had a material data breach. Whenever I see this stuff in the headline, I immediately think of Kramer, Fave, Palo Alto Networks, the best of breed cybersecurity firm, with a stock that's been a huge winner for my child, which are somewhere than 120% year to date. While the stock got hit right after Palo Alto reported last month, we had CEO Nikesh Rural on the show that same night. He told us a compelling story. I hope you listen, because the stock's now rallied 27% from that post quarter low. Now, we need to figure out how these new SEC rules will impact the industry. So let's check in once again with the source, with Nikesh Arora, the straight shooting chairman and CEO of Palo Alto Networks, to get a better view of the situation. Mr. Arora, welcome back to Man Money. Hey, Jim. How are you? Thank you for having me. Of course, Nikesh. Now, look, these rules are very significant. There's no more dodging them. You only have a certain number of days. What will it do to the companies that get hacked? Well, look, Jim, we've talked about this, and I said to you last time we talked, that the amount of cyber activity from the adversaries continues to go up. And part of it is, you know, it's like it's happening anyway, but now we're hearing more and more about it because these rules are requiring people to disclose. The challenge, as you and I have talked about, is you've got to disclose before you have a full handle on what's going on. And even at the one today, if you look at the disclosure, it's still not clear what actually is going down, but it's clear they've reported they've had a problem it's deemed material by them, and they're still working on solving the problem. I think that we need to split this in two parts, the principle of it and the impact and the specifics and tactics. At a very principle level, you cannot hide. You have to protect your infrastructure against future cyber attacks, and everybody will be held accountable. The board, the CEO, the chief security officer, the chief technology officer, there is nowhere to hide because all of us rely on cyber or technology to deliver our capabilities and services. So this has become the number one enterprise risk of all time. And you as a CEO, you as a board member, have to make sure you understand the risk, you understand the state of your company vis-a-vis -vis that risk, and you understand what mitigation or remediation plans are in place to make sure things are okay. On a, on a tactical, specific level, there's a whole bunch of stuff that still needs to be worked out. Well, Nikesh, when I see that the company itself the target gets to determine the materiality. I have to say to myself, hey, listen, let's not disclose this. It's hardly material. And then see if I can get away with it. Well, I'm not sure it's quite as easy as that, Jim, because when you have to disclose it, you actually don't even know the extent of it. So it's very hard to assess materiality. And if you've got a good lawyer, he's going to tell you to risk manage yourself and make sure you disclose this lest it turn into something bigger, and then you get held accountable post-fact that you didn't disclose it was material. So I think it works both ways. I think you are more than likely to report it because it could turn into something bigger and material, which is often the case with cyber attacks. As you know, you might have seen that you know, we have some other situations going on where there's no ransom demand being made, but the company is aware that they've been breached and working hard to fix it. Well, what are we supposed to do? You yourself have said one of the great businesses of all time is this you know, cyber ransom business to the point where one of these attackers actually let the SEC know that the, the target's taking too long to respond. Yes, yes. And like, I think what we are supposed to do is not change. We're supposed to make sure we build good infrastructure. We're supposed to make sure we protect our infrastructure. And the more our company relies on technology, it's our job as CEOs and leaders to make sure we understand the risk associated with it. Now, Jim, this year has been a phenomenal year for cybersecurity stocks. And I think it's just beginning. I think we're going to see more and more of this activity come 2024. I think you'll see more 8Ks filed. You'll see more and more conversation around it. And like I said, it's still the most profitable business with least amount of convictions in the world. So we haven't done anything to significantly impact the bad actors and try to fix this problem. We just have to make sure we're safer and more secure in each of our companies. Well, did Clorox call you? Did VF call you? Did any of these guys call you? MGM call you and say, give us a hand here? Well, Jim, we do get, uh, you know, what we did uh, last quarter is in anticipation of this, we wrote to our top 1,500 customers and offered to help them for free. So we've gone ahead and called 15 of our customers who are our longstanding Palo Alto customers saying, listen, you have been a loyal customer of Palo Alto. We understand these rules are coming into place. We'd like to offer you a $0 retainer in case you get breached so we can come in and jump in and help you. Of the customers who've responded, half of them have, have taken us on our offer. So... All I can say is that our customers are aware that we're standing by to help them. 
we actually step up and help them learn to make sure this was not an economic event. They, could, they didn't have to think about it. And, you know, we'll be there when our customers need us. I can't specifically, honestly, tell you who called me or didn't call me. Right. Well, I wonder whether Palo Alto is in a good seal, good housekeeping seal of approval, something like this. Cyber criminals could be like car thieves. They survey a parking lot and just go after the ones with open doors, skip those with locked doors. Is it being a, a, a locked door if you hire Palo Alto? Of course, Jim. Look, we have our capabilities. We have our products that we put into place. They are next generation products, whether it's our cloud security portfolio, our network security portfolio, our most recent AI-based SOC management portfolio. We are in there because we are promising our customers we can help them re remediate their security issues. We can put a blanket around their infrastructure to make sure it stays protected. So yes, of course, you want the next generation set of products in your infrastructure. As I said, there's a trillion dollars of embedded cybersecurity plant out there in the world, which will have to go through a refurbishment over the next five years. Now, I, I want to try to distinguish. There are bad guys who are very sophisticated, hit MGM, maybe hit VF, uh, hit Clorox. And then we had uh, Gina Raimondo on recently, Commerce Secretary, and she says, look, they, they meet with the Chinese, they have them over for dinner, it looks really great, and the hacking has only gotten worse from China. Which of the two we should be worried about, the bad guys or the Chinese? I think we have to separate uh, nation-state activity from individual hacker activity. There's a lot of self-formed groups out there who have been formed because of the upsize, upside in going out there and doing ransomware and hacking, and because of the easy availability of crypto where we can transact with crypto and there's a lot more anonymity than used to be in the past. So I think there's a set of factors which have made this a very profitable enterprise for people who have hacking skills around the world. And of course, the fact that there's a lot of old infrastructure out there where we're building our technology on, and coupled with the fact that the conviction rates are low. So I don't think this is a nation state issue as much as this is a individual groups of ransomware threat actors. Now, some of them are state, uh, I, I'd say, sponsored or state okay, but I don't think this is this ransomware activity is a nation state activity. It's more of a individual actor, individual group activity. How many of these could be stopped by just the company saying, listen to the workforces? Don't surrender anything unless it's from a certain guy, you know, with a certain code, and just stop trying to help employees, other employees, because they may be bad actors. They may be imitated. Jim, it's very hard to stop this by trying and talk to every individual in your organization and trying to get them to have good hygiene. It's like trying to regulate, you know, traffic by telling everybody to drive carefully. So it doesn't happen. There always will be bad bad things that happen because somebody has been marginally sloppy or somebody didn't pay attention at the moment in time. As, as we like to say, you know, we have to be right 100% of the time. They only have to be right once, the bad actors. So the right way to do it is to collect all this data, watch all the activity in the enterprise, and be able to watch you know, anomalous, anomalous behavior and say, wait, that doesn't look normal. Let me stop it right away. Now, for that, you have to have a very good understanding of what normal looks like to be able to stop the anomalous behavior. That can only be done by using AI. This is something we've talked about. This is something well, you're the largest the repository of cybersecurity data. So you should be able to measure what anybody says versus the anomaly. And, you know, Jim, I've said to you that our biggest pipeline is in our SOC business, our product XIM. It's got lots and lots of interest because people understand this is a problem that needs to be solved. There's one choice is to replace everything in your infrastructure and try and get good hygiene. The other option is to go deploy an AI-based capability that sits on top of your existing infrastructure and helps protect you whilst in the back end you're continuing to upgrade your capability. So I think that's the only way out in the industry. We're all going to have to deploy some sort of AI blanket that runs across our data, finds these anomalous situations, blocks them, makes it okay for us to be able to run our businesses. So I think that's where the world is going. I think 24 portends to be as good a year, if not, better from a demand perspective for cybersecurity. Inc incredible, because you already said that you only have 3.5% of the share. Nick Aurora, Chairman CEO of Palo Alto Networks, thank you for explaining this stuff to us. It's really important. Thank you, Jim. Happy holidays. Same to you. Man Bunny's back in for the break. Coming up, is this cohort losing its punch? Kramer mixes it up with a segment that wants its fizz back. Next. <laughs> 